Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to do an ammonium analysis by hand. Um, you can also use the auto analyzer like we'll see for the nitrate um, analysis during this lab. Um, but it's pretty easy to do um, this ammonium analysis by hand. Um, it's a method called the Indophenol Blue method. So it's based on the reaction of the ammonium in our water samples um, in an alkaline environment that ammonium will react with phenol producing a blue color and it also needs to be in the presence of an oxidizing agent. In this case we use bleach um, and then to make the solution alkaline we used a solution of sodium hydroxide and sodium citrate. And then finally we're going to um, actually add a catalyst because the reaction will occur at room temperature but we can speed it up to help analyze the samples. And so we'll add a catalyst called sodium nitroprusside and that's just going to speed the reaction up that produces that blue color. Um, so to start with um, I've got a whole rack of, of acid wash test tubes here, um, so this um, analysis can be really easy to contaminate with things just from like ammonium detergent or smoking. Um, so it, it's really easy to contaminate this and we need to be careful to not um, add any ammonium to these samples. Um, so everything's been acid washed um, and rinsed. Um, so now I'm going to start with the standard curve. Um, here I've got a, an ammonium stock solution. And I'm just going to add a small amount to these test tubes and then fill them up with 10 milliliters of um, ultra pure water, which is a very um, highly purified water that we've got in the lab. It's kind of like a double DI system. Um, and so I'm just going to add a specific amount of, of ammonium stock solution to three test tubes. So I'm going to do these in triplicate um, and then fill them up with that 10 mils of water. Um, if you look at, the, at your lab manual for today, um, you can actually see the series of standards that I'm creating. So I'm just going to go ahead and pipette this. So this is the ammonium stock solution. The first one is um, only two microliters, so it's a very small amount. It's about half a drop of what you would usually expect. And here I'm just trying to be really consistent with the pipette. Because um, this um, small um, volume that we're doing, just two microliters, um, any little changes how you do the pipette can really change um, actually what, how much you're measuring out there. Um, so now I'll fill these up with 10 mils of DI water, which we've got here in a beaker. and put that right in the test tubes that I added the ammonium stock solution. It's important that that 10 mils be accurate um, because the, the actual concentrations that we estimate these standards to be are based on you know putting a very specific amount of that stock solution into exactly 10 mils of water. So we'll get the um, target concentration right on um, and then our standard curve will be nice and reliable. Alright, so I'll just cap these. And then I'll do um, the rest of these um, the rest of the standards in the curve and then we'll go through and add all the reagents. So I, um, I created a, a series of test tubes that cover a range of concentrations that we expect for our samples um, and I've also went ahead and pipetted 10 mils um, of our Willow Lake samples also in triplicate test tubes so there's three of each and now I'm going to start to add the reagents. Um, we'll do this with a repeater pipette um, so this has a little dial up top. Um, you could select a, a certain number on there. This is set to four right now. Um, that means each time we press down this button here, it's going to pipette four units um, of solution out. And the units are specific to the tips. Um, so like this small one here, um, one unit is equal to 50 microliters. Um, 
And so uh, if it's set on four, we're going to be getting um, 200 microliters out every time we push this down. Um, and we need to add 400 microliters of this phenol solution um, to each tube. So as I go along and do this, I'm actually going to add uh, two clicks into each tube. These repeater pipettes are really nice. Um, it can save you time because you don't have to stop and, and refill the, your, your pipette tip every single time. Um, with this, we can actually just fill this um, tip all the way up um, and get through a, a handful of test tubes at a time without having to go back to our beaker of solution. So, um, I don't know if you can see, but I've got all the test tubes actually off. Are right, the test tube caps off? And that's so as I'm going along here, um, it's easy for me to keep track of which test tubes have got the reagent. Um, it's really easy to mess up and, and miss a test tube. Um, you know, or when you come back to refill the tip, it's really easy to forget where you were. Um, so this is just kind of a trick I use to, to help me keep track of everything. So once again, I'm just being nice and consistent with the way I'm pushing down that um, pipette plunger. Um, and that's going to kind of help keep all these tubes really consistent across the board. Um, it does matter how much phenol you, you add to these tubes because it's actually what's reacting with the ammonium. Um, so if you add more phenol, I've noticed that it tends to um, alter the reaction a little bit. Alright, so all the tubes have got the phenol now. I'll go ahead and repeat this with both um, the nitroprusside solution and um, that oxidizing, oxidizing solution, which is made up of an alkaline solution and bleach. And those two things are necessary for the reaction. Alright, so the tubes have been incubating for about three hours. Um, and you can see here, these are our standard curved tubes. Um, this one here on the far left is a blank, um, and then they're increasing in concentration all the way up to this high standard right over here. And then here's an example of each of the three test tubes from Willow Lake. Um, so you can see there was some variation in ammonium concentration with depth. This sample is from the surface here. This one is from a half a meter, and then this was from one and a half meters deep. Um, so now I'm going to read these on the spectrophotometer at uh, 640 nanometer wavelength and measure the absorbance of these. So you can actually estimate the concentration of our unknown samples over here using the concentrations uh, of our standards in the standard curve. And we'll provide those data to you 